Hi, Wendy. Hello, Elmer. It is so good to see your smiling face. Thank you. It's, it's been way too long. So how are you doing? We're doing, as I say every single day, I'm keeping the faith, keeping the faith. But actually, I think you know a little of me as probably many GMC members. Um, I get up in the morning and get going every single day. At the end of the day, you're supposed to be tired. At the end of your lifetime, you're supposed to be dead tired. But I have to share, my 26 years at Wibbeck, I have never worked this hard in my life, nor has our team. Eric just every single day is 14, 15, 16 hours and more. It's thinking time, it's reading time, it's prepping time, it's engaging time, it's making decision time. It's just huge. But I think actually the anxiety is, is less and the stress is less because I think that Wibbeck and others like our organization are part of the solution. So when you feel that you are part of the solution, you have that sense of, of ownership, of doing it and fulfilling it. So that's what's really driving me every single day and our team and our entire team at Wibbeck. You guys always work hard, and I know that you are a, a pretty engaged and personal uh, manager. How are you keeping your team safe and motivated? During yeah, this well, uh, we have a staff of about 65, so we really have grown tremendously over the years in seven offices. Greater Milwaukee is our largest, and we have many uh, individuals that work statewide from the Milwaukee office, but we have offices in the Fox Valley, Appleton and Green Bay, office in Madison, South Central, an office in Racine and Kenosha and Southeast, and an office of one and a half people now in um, sort of the Southwest area, Viroqua and La Crosse area. So um, we've been working virtually now for probably going in our fifth week, and it has worked actually very, very well, even in some ways better than I had thought. Uh, Wibbeck already was doing our business educational programming on ground, online, and on demand. And so now we moved it all to on demand and online. And so thank goodness we really had some of that core competency already with us to be able to do it. Last year, you know, 5,000 unduplicated individuals went through our business education programming. So that's a lot. And I would say that specifically in the last month, it's really, really picked up. At first, it was just everybody was getting their life together and wondering what this was all about. But now moving that training to online and on demand has been wonderful. Last week, we had, I think, over 100 people on one of our sessions that we did. So making that very accessible. So that's great. And then we've just, um, you know, really stocked up everybody house, everybody's house with a printer and a scanner. And everybody knows how to sign names and documents and so on because we're a small bank. So we are doing ACH, electronic funds transfer, every single day to our loan clients. We're closing loans, we're signing agreements, we're borrowing money, we're lending money, and we're doing that all really entirely virtually. I go into the office about once a week, collect the mail, look at things, water the plants, you know, and other individuals are doing that same too in the offices. But for the most part, we're really 65 strong and working from home base and keeping the machine and the, the merit and the impact of Wibbit going. Wendy, when people think about Wibbick, they think of uh, new businesses just getting started, getting their initial seed capital. So who are you serving now if, if not that kind of entrepreneur? Yeah, I'm going to go back to one other question that I didn't share about team. So one is that it, we have changed our business operations, if you will, to be able to work mm -hmm. more in a virtual mode. And I think we've done that fairly effectively, which is, which is great because it's not an easy lift for everybody. In addition, um, we just got very, very well scheduled with our meetings. So my top leadership every single day, Tuesday at 10, we call it Tuesday at 10 now, every day at 10. We mm -hmm. meet, might be 15 minutes, sometimes it's longer. Different things happen within that 24 hour period or over the weekend. We have a larger leadership group and that meets once a week. Our all staff meeting is every other week. At first we were doing it weekly, but now every other week seems to work. We do it virtually, we have little themes. I mean, this, this week, everybody gets to wear their favorite baseball, sports uniform. We had Green Day when we we're trying to get Wisconsin to finally change to green rather than the black and white of winter. So things like that are helpful. So really regimenting and having schedules for in-person, really working with our supervisors so that they support the frontline staff because you know part of it is really difficult working with entrepreneurs and business owners that are in panic mode. And that takes an emotional toll tremendously. And we send um, little love gifts. So ever since we've been at home once a week, all of our 65 plus staff members receive a uh, Wibbit client product. So one week was popcorn, one was soap, one was lotion. Um, what else do we have coming? I don't give the surprise away, but so a little something, and it really means a lot. Something coming into the mail from your employer, something you can use or something you can eat. It's really been beautiful. One week was nuts. 
So now going into um, what we're about, uh, Wibic really is tremendously about startup businesses and supporting existing businesses. Our piece is small business, micro businesses, caring about all of them, but specifically focusing on women, people of color, lower wealth individuals, veterans, military connected families. And so uh, previously about all of our loans or originated loans, new loans, about 65% were startup. So in that phase of startup, and I'll talk a little bit more about sort of my forecast and thought and what that's gonna look like later, a lot of the loans and lending activity right now are for existing businesses. Needing that line of credit, needing that short term loan financing, needing uh, reasonable loans to keep the business going and sustain. So that's changed a little bit in the startup nature. But again, when we talk more about the future, um, I'll give my comments on that. So our loan applications, I think to give you some idea of number, last year we had about 350 live loan applications. That's 2019. We approved about 160 credits. And um, this year already, or just in the last month alone, we have had 125 new loan applications. Wow. Yeah. And 250 inquiries, some of those that will turn into loan applications too, but just sort of help. Um, our loan portfolio right now, it's about 22 million. It comprises 900 distinct loans, but about 600 specific businesses. That's pretty incredible. So, you know, I wonder what's the thing that you're hearing from uh, business owners and your, your loan portfolio that might not match the public perception of how businesses are, are enduring this experience? Yeah. Well, I, I think that the Wibbick model is that we don't just rent money. We really um, improve or assist um, lives on an economic basis, and I really believe that. And so therefore, one act is the renting of money in a responsible loan, but the main act that we do is really providing that small business consulting and support for the life of the loan. So a relationship, and not negative here, it's just a different lending thing, but a relationship far more than a financial institution or a bank would mm -hmm. have with the client overall. Um, we have specific small business consultants that live with the portfolio for the life of the loan. And not only do they provide direct support, many of them have owned their own businesses or former bankers, you know, are, are seasoned individuals. They're the middle of the hourglass, bringing good things. So for instance, as you know, bringing the Spark program and bringing Scale Up program of the GMC to our Wibbit clients, if that is the appropriate vehicle for them to now take on to grow and scale their business. So being the middle of the hourglass, being that trusted confidant. And I will say that too, we're a little bit of, um, you know, doctor, doctor business, and we're a little bit of emotional support for these businesses. Owning a business, that's about self. You own this business. It's not about a job. Job. Nothing again wrong with jobs, but owning a business is a whole different piece. A lot of self in that. Our businesses don't want to close. Our businesses don't want to give up. Our businesses are fighting for everything they can. They need assistance in terms of listening to so many things that are out there. Um, there are, of course, scams out there, too, that we have to help them with, but listening to all the things that are out there and deciding what is the right resource and tool for them and at this time, because there is not a one-size-fit-all. It's not all about PPP, SBA loans. That might be a vehicle for some, but not for all. So we really have to help them with that, and that takes just, again, huge increase in counseling hours and communication with our clients. So, you know, Wendy, it seems to me that uh, during the good times, um, we think a lot about great collaborations, mm -hmm. for instance, the scale up and with a collaboration with uh, the African American Chamber and launching Spark. And mm -hmm. we think about uh, innovation. It, it strikes me that maybe now the, the prioritization of innovation and collaboration yes. is even more important. Can be, can be. So a great example of that, WDC through the um, state government uh, came out with a program called WDC 2020. Initial monies that came in was $5 million. They only worked with CDFIs in the state of Wisconsin that had a portfolio of greater than 4 million. Only these grants, only for use for payroll and for rent or mortgage if the business owned a building and um, up to 20 employees. So really focused on the micro. So in that case, you know, Wibbit could have taken the whole 5 million, right? We got 600 loans. I mean, boom, we can get, you know, move it. But in that case, we go, let's partner, let's partner. The Monk Chamber could not have ridden on their own. Their portfolio is not as great as another organization. So we partnered with Cap Services at Stevens Point and the Monk Chamber. And, you know, we brought home $2 million of that 5 million, which has now gone directly out to these businesses. And we did it through Formsite. We built a tool. We allowed our partners to use that same tool. We were the umbrella, but it came 
came out to the clients of CAP Services as CAP Service Support, not as WIBIC Support. They branded it. It came out as Monk Chamber Support. We were just sort of the overarching, handling it, doing it, you know, helping with some of the admin. So that was a great example that really, really made sense. It just, I mean, left a great taste in everybody's mouth. I can't tell you, I think I sent you some of the client quotes, how meaningful mm -hmm. that was. It was the money, it was, but what you read in their comments was somebody cares. Somebody is here to help me. Thank you, Wibbick. Thank you, CDFI, for caring and thinking about me and bringing these resources to me. That was huge. So I think collaboration, yes. I think probably even more so that can be. You know, collaboration isn't for everything, but it can be, it can be, it can be. Um, bigger pie, work together, make sense, economy of resources. But the other piece is innovation, innovation. We created two new loans in like two days. My deal is move people. You are smart, move. And, you know, get to yes, what do we need? So, I mean, it's simple, but it's a fast, furious, call it a fast track loan, $15,000 term loan. We need this many things. Generally, we need that many things. Bank needs this many things. Um, and boom, turn it around, disperse it immediately, fast track it, bing, bang, boom. Same thing with the $10,000 line of credit. Get this money out, ask the questions we have to ask. We might want some of these other questions, ask what we have to ask to still be appropriate for compliance and reporting, you know, and lending, but get it out there. So that'd be an example of our initially, you know, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, quick innovation, but we're looking at other things too. So how do you see things changing? You know, we're, we're not going to ever be the place that we were. Yeah. But you know, life never is. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. so there's positive changes, there's negative changes. Um, you know, the world is always changing. This is something that right now we see very little positive out and mainly it's the health people and people dying and people scared and just so many terrible things. But again, our piece is that economic piece that we are focusing on as well as being good residents and citizens and trying to be safe in our ways that we're doing as an employer as, as well as individuals. But how I see it changing is that businesses will come back. Some will, some will not. Some won't be able to make it right now. But they're still entrepreneurs, and you know, failure is okay sometimes. It's just inevitable sometimes. So they might come back. They might need some healing. They might need some time. But they might come back. But hopefully, we can sustain. We have a great, great, great public support in our state, and great private support. So hopefully, we can sustain through this you know, in again, a formidable way, really being creative, really helping these individual businesses out. I love some of the plans already being laid out by the governor and WDC on sort of the next thought of those kind of things. So we got to really have good think tanks together to help everybody through this. A little longer term, what I think is going to happen is that, um, you know, it's sort of going to like go in some phases. We're going to have the next, well, actual formal phases through the, the Badger plan or win the badger, I forgot the name of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bounce badger forward, um, you know, really specific phases, how we can roll this out to be safe, but to open up some businesses, open further, open further. But again, there might be people for life running around with a mask and that's okay. And gloves and doing things in different ways. But can we still be out there and be social beings and buy mm -hmm. from retail stores and be together live? I think we will. I think a longer term thing that's gonna happen with micro and small businesses is once things settle a little bit more, and maybe we get a little bit more of a pickup. In the last global economic crisis, what we saw, which was only a global economic crisis, it was not a health pandemic. We saw that banks went up market and they will again. They have to, it's a different model, it's a business model. And they will go up market and that'll leave a whole bunch of small and medium sized businesses that still need access to capital. And so CDFIs, community lenders and so on will again swell in lending um, to such businesses. And that happened last time. Our portfolio grew tremendously during that piece. So with that said, you're going to need some resources uh, in the, the intermediate and, and near-term futures. Mm -hmm. What do you say to your GMC member peers? Well, the financial institutions have already probably gotten a call from me. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we asked the financial institutions three things that already are investors in us. One, you know, for helping our liquidity a little bit, could we have a deferment on the payment that we pay you? In almost all cases, they said, absolutely. Um, so we have a deferment there just to keep the liquidity of WIPIC going. Why not? I'm going to pay you. I'm just going to put it at the end of the loan. But could you help us during this period as we're moving along with it? So that was great. Second, um, grant support. Many financial institutions provide direct grant support. Could we have it? Could we have it now? And could we use it for what we feel we need to use it for? If we need it for uh, loan loss reserves to leverage other dollars, allow us to do that. If we need it for operation, allow us to do that. If we even want to put it back into equity capital, allow us to do that. 
they've all said yes for that. And then the third is actual additional financing. And already um, two major banks uh, have stepped to the table, each with $2 million. So we have a pot of $4 million that as soon as the Congress and Senate finishes on the PPP, will actually be a PPP direct lender of $4 million. It's a small amount, but it's not a small amount when you're in the WIBIC loan portfolio and you could use a PPP and you're probably not going to be able to get in line fast enough or um, to get it from a bank you know, that you're working with. So that's an example. So again, you know, Wibig uh, has a model where we can borrow from individuals. I mean, you know, in the name of great George Mosier, um, George goes, well, Wendy, I have two ways that I can help. This is the amount of money that I grant each year, and this is the amount of money that I invest each year. And my comment to George Mosier was, I'd like to be in both of those piles. Mm -hmm. And we were for many, many years. He granted us some money, but he also invested money. Well, WIBIC is interested in looking at investments. We have investments from financial institutions. We have investments from faith-based organizations. We have investments from municipalities, city, county, state, and federal. And then we also have an offering for accredited investors. Um, again, we, our average cost of funds, we'd like to borrow it at 2% or under. And in 26 years that I've been president, we've paid all of our investors back on time. So I think we have a tra good track record. Uh, I think you certainly have a great track record. So I'm going to give you a moment to share something optimistic, share something positive. Uh, what would you like for that to be? I would like to make it actually a call out to GMC members that uh, you can make a difference. And I'm sure you already are, but thinking about small and micro businesses in your community, I can send to you, Elmer, and maybe you could post it, a great link to numerous Wibbick uh, uh, clients that are restaurants and catering businesses and food businesses. Curbside, safe pickup, it really will make a difference. It will make a difference, so think about that. Think about gifts, think about other things. You're not going to a retail store now to buy your mom that gift, to buy your sister something, but we can also provide, you know, and if it's not even a Wibbit client, it's an independent and locally owned business that buying from them directly, it will make a difference. I can't share with you how much that'll make a difference. So you do have a lot of power in terms of your purchasing needs and think about that not only now while we're living more virtually and safer at home, but think about it when we begin to step outside. As Wibbit has said many times, we're not anti big box but we're definitely pro little box. And it really makes a difference in these individual lives. 85% of the businesses in Wisconsin are micro businesses, employing less than a dozen individuals. It's a huge amount of businesses and we got to spread that wealth a little bit with those micro businesses. I think that was absolutely perfect. Wendy, thank you so much for being so generous with your time. Um, I am sympathetic for how hard you and your team have been working. Um, the the right GMC here. team, right the Gallup team, there's a lot going on, but uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to celebrating on the other side of this, the successes and the, the businesses that we help survive and even thrive. Absolutely. Glass is half full. We got to look at it that way. So thank you for uh, the opportunity. Thank you, GMC. Thank you. <laughs>